the supernatural. And, you know, as true believers who hold a biblical worldview, we believe in a supernatural God, the creator of heaven, earth, man, and all of creation. Isn't that right? We, all, we, we believe what God's Word says about all aspects of life, its origin, as well as the direction our lives should take based upon that Word. Amen. And how God and His supernatural power affects our life and our God-given assignments. The supernatural is something that's so important because God is supernatural. He is a, a supernatural God, amen, with supernatural power that He shares with man so that we live supernatural lives and we can experience all that God said in His Word we can, amen. One reason why so many people turn to false religions and the lies of the world is because the church as a whole has been Bible illiterate, and have been powerless because it's denied the power. It's had a form of godliness. Not, 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 not everybody, but what I'm just saying many times that's what happens. We, we're warned about it in the, in the Scripture that we can have a form of godliness, yet deny the power thereof. And so without the Holy Ghost working in the church, the church is powerless. It is no more than... than now, it may not be anything, maybe I better not name any organizations lest I get somebody mad. So, but it would be no, no different than any uh, you know, natural humanitarian organization. There, there, there's many good ones and there's things that help communities and areas. And, and praise God for that. But don't get that confused with um, if it has a form of godliness, don't get it confused with the power of God. And so the real power of God is what He wants us to be able to experience because how many know we run into real issues and real life problems in a real world that we need the touch of God to change it. Amen. So we're looking at various aspects of the supernatural power of God and how we as true believers can learn to flow with and operate in that power. So that power isn't just for the pastor and his wife and, a, and the staff. That power is for every believer. See, it's the believing ones are the ones that are to have the signs following them. Not just the pastor. Every believe, if we are believing ones, according to the Great Commission there in Mark chapter 16, the believing ones are the ones, the very first thing he, that God said, you'll cast out devils. It begins with casting out devils. It ends with laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. So these are supernatural aspects of the power of God that God said the believing ones would operate in. And so we just have to learn what's ours so we can believe for it or what God says that we could and then learn to cooperate and operate in that power. Amen. And it begins with us just saying, God... I want to do what you want to do with my life. Most of us never start out thinking that we're going to be doing something great for God. We think that we, we may want to live a significant life. We want to, may want to be successful. We've got our, all our different outlooks and we got our own different definitions about what success is and, and what living significantly would look like. And most of the time it's centered around what we own how much money we make, and all those kind of things, what have diddly to do with what Jesus said. That Jesus doesn't mind us having money or things. He just doesn't want money or things to have us. He said it like this, What does it man, profit of a man he gained the whole world, yet lose his soul? A man's life doesn't consist of the abundance which he possesses. So it, it, what we have to understand, as significance and as success, doesn't have anything to do with what we possess, necessarily. Amen. God's not against that, but if we're defining as significant as success by that, we're going to find out that one day all that will go up in smoke. But what won't go up in smoke is what God's done in us and works through us. What we do to affect the lives of God's precious possession called humanity has everything to do with what causes us 
to live significantly or when it's all said and done, make a difference and be rewarded for. Because it's what we do for God that counts in the end, in the end run. Right. Praise the Lord. So with that in mind tonight, I said that because a lot of times we, you know, I can think back in my own life. I've been walking with the Lord for 37 years. When I started out, I never had any idea I'd be doing what I'm doing today. Matter of fact, you've heard me say many times, if, if you told me when I got saved in March the 30th, 1986, at the age of 24, if you told me uh, that same day I'd be doing what I'm doing today, I'd say, you smoked bad dope last night and you still hung over, praise the Lord. And I, I wouldn't mean that disrespectful, I just didn't, that wasn't on my radar, that wasn't my plan. But how many know when you, find, when you get into God's Word and you allow the Holy Spirit to lead in God your life, He'll lead you in His plan. His plan is totally different than our plan. And I can tell you tonight, only His plan is going to bring satisfaction. Only His plan is going to bring true success and significance uh, to the world you live in. And God wants you to know that he loves you. He wants you to learn to flow with and operate in this power that we're talking about, the supernatural power of God. So tonight's message, I'm just going to entitle it The Supernatural and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. The Supernatural and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in talking about the supernatural power of God, the Holy Spirit must be talked about. Amen. And must be talked about, and the Holy Spirit must be talked about and understood because He is the agent of the Godhead that works directly in the earth today. How many know that the Godhead is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? All three co-equal, co-eternal God. One God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All co-equal, co-equal, co-eternal God. One God in three persons. That's what the Bible teaches. So here's what we have to understand. God the Father is on the throne in heaven. Jesus has his right hand. But the Holy Spirit is in the earth today. And in every believer, he actually lives in us. So the Holy Spirit is the supernatural power of God at work or is the agent of the Godhead actually at work today. D d fulfilling his part of the Godhead working directly in the affairs of the earth today and in man. And so we need to understand that. Without, under without our understanding of the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit and our cooperation. Everybody say cooperation. Without our cooperation with him, we limit the supernatural power of God that can work in and through our lives. So we have to not only know something about the Holy Spirit, but we have to actually, uh, we have to work in cooperation with Him. Can I get an amen? amen? In order for that power to work in and through our lives. Now, I want us to open tonight to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 12, and we're going to begin looking in verse number 1. Matter of fact, we're just going to look in this verse for right now. It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now notice here it says that God concerning spiritual gifts, one translation says, Now concerning spiritual matters, I will not have you ignorant. Well, here's what, a couple things we need to understand. If you look at your, depending on what Bible you have, I'm reading from the King James Version, Depending on what version you have, it probably, if you're reading, for instance, I'm reading for the King James Version, now concerning spiritual gifts. If you look at your, that word gifts there, it's in italics. And so that word in the King James Version, that word, ta and that word gifts there is in the italics. That means this, that it wasn't in the original Greek manuscripts. It was added by the translators to further help the English reader to understand the content of the verse. Okay? Now, what that means is, even though it wasn't there, it, they added that. Doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong. It just means this. You have to weigh it by what the Scripture says. And so, the reason the, it, the translators added that is, once again, to bring clarity to the content or the point that's trying to uh, be made. Now, what we need to understand is this, 
that necessarily that translation isn't bad. However, what we need to understand, this is why when we read some other translations, it can be translated like this. Now concerning spiritual matters. We're going to put up the... uh, How many know that spiritual matters would include spiritual gifts? And the reason why I'm saying this is because when you read chapter 12, which was not written in chapter form, man added the verses and the chapters to help us and as study and finding and so on and so forth. So that's not divinely inspired per se, the, the chapters and verses, that's there to help us, okay? It's not wrong, it's there to help us. I thank God for them. It makes it easier for us to identify, remember where things are, and reference points and so on and so forth. But when we read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we find out primarily he's talking about three topics. He's talking, this is why spiritual gifts may not be the best translation of this because he's talking more than just about spiritual gifts. Spiritual matters would be a great, tra- in, in, a great translation of that word. Because he's talking about three primary things. Spiritual gifts, which uh, if we don't get to them this week, which we probably won't, we'll talk about next week. Uh, Secondly, he talks about the body of Christ. The body of Christ. And thirdly, he talks about uh, ministry gifts in the body of Christ. All those three things are topics or about of chapter 12, or you could say he talks about spiritual matters. And notice what he said about these spiritual matters. He doesn't want us to be ignorant of those spiritual matters. This word ignorant also means uninformed, to misunderstand, or be misinformed about. So it's not just that we're totally ignorant. It does include that. It, It means more, though, than just not having any understanding about it. Now also this word means uninformed. It means you just don't know. It means to, to, to misunderstand. In other words, it, it means that you were taught something about the Holy Spirit that causes you to have a wrong understanding of the Holy Spirit. He said, I don't want you to misunderstand about what I'm saying here. This is why I'm teaching. I don't want you to misunderstand about these spiritual matters concerning the Holy Spirit. This is why I'm teaching that. Or he said, I don't want, or it can be translated, I don't want you to be misinformed. Misinformed. Misinformed means you taught you were taught something that was wrong about the Holy Ghost. How many know if you were taught that tongues isn't for today, you were misinformed? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell people then when they say, well, it's not for today. I say, it's too late telling me that. I got got saved and filled the Holy Ghost uh, about 36. I got saved 37 years ago. got filled the Holy Ghost 36 years ago. Too late for telling me that. I already found out the Bible is true and you're wrong. Now, I'm not trying to be mean, but you've been misinformed. And so this is what the Bible warns us about. So if we read the New Living Translation of this verse, it says like this. Now, brothers and sisters, now dear brothers and sisters, regarding your questions about the, notice, the special abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. So I really like that. The special abilities the Spirit of God gives us. Woo, special abilities. Having to know the special, that, that God, by the Holy Spirit, does give us special abilities. You're not, a, you're not a just a natural being. Stop seeing yourself as a mere human. You're, you are human, but you're not only human. Come on, you are human, but you're not only human. Hallelujah. You're, you, you, you have the divine nature of God in you if you're a child of God. Hallelujah. And so, uh, I like what... One Greek writer wrote here, he says, Now concerning things pertaining to and of the Holy Ghost, I will not have you ignorant. Things pertaining to and of the Holy Ghost. And I think that's the most accurate translation because what actually this is talking about is things pertaining to and of the Holy Ghost. And so it's really important that we do have an understanding about the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when it comes to the supernatural power of God, consider these aspects of the Holy Spirit's work. Most of us who think about the power of God 
automatically think about it in con conjunction with the working of the Holy Spirit. Don't we? Most of us, if we have our mind renewed to the Word of God, when we think about the power of God, it, it, it somewhere in that equation, really close to the beginning of it, you're thinking about the working of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So, I'm going to say it again. When it comes to the supernatural power of God, consider these aspects of the Holy Spirit's work. Why is this so important? Because we need to know what the work in the ministry of the Holy Spirit is so that our cooperation with Him is what it's supposed to be so that God's power can work in and through our lives. That's why. This is why we got to know these things. So the, the Holy Spirit's a big deal. The Holy Spirit ain't done away with. Come on. If the Holy Spirit's done away with, God's done away with, and God ain't done away with. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And everything that the Holy Spirit ever has been, He is for today. Because this is the dispensation or the, the, the era or the time frame, the dispensation of... It is the church age. The church age and the, the age of grace has everything to do with the dispensation, the working of the Holy Ghost. Of course, the Holy Ghost is working in all dispensations, but the Holy Spirit is present in this one working in and through his body. Amen. So we, what we want to do is look at these various aspects. And I'll be about the eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of these. Uh, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them. Praise the Lord. That we need to understand about the Holy Spirit. Number one, the Holy Spirit is the supernatural power of God at work to draw men to Jesus Christ. How are men drawn to Jesus Christ? Is it because your irresistible attitude? Is it because you're handsome or beautiful? Or is it because there's a supernatural work that's being done in the earth through the power of God called the Holy Spirit that actually, upon hearing the message of the gospel, draws mankind to His Son, Jesus Christ. According to Jesus in John chapter, let's look at, now there's, for time's sake, we're not going to look at repeated verses on each point, but we are going to look at at least one verse in each point, some two on these seven points, because I want you to know that what I'm saying is not just something I'm making up that sounds good. I want you to know that there's in the Bible, and you need to know where it's in the Bible, because this helps you recognize the working and the move of the Holy Spirit so that we have confidence how to move with Him. So in other words, in this case, which we'll look in John chapter 6, let's turn there, in John chapter 6, verse 44, here's what it says. John 6, 44, what was the point? The Holy Spirit is a supernatural power of God at work to draw men to Jesus Christ. John 6, 44 no man, these are the words of Jesus, no man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draws him. And I will raise him up in the last day. Well, when you read John 16, you can write that down, starting with like verse 8 through verse 11, you'll find out that the God the Father draws, like it says right there, draws man unto him, draws man to, to Jesus. How he does that. How does a father draw men through the Holy Ghost? John chapter 16 lets us know, yeah, it's the father, but it's the father working through the Holy Ghost, drawing men to Jesus. And the truth is, unless we're drawn to Jesus, we can't come unto him. Amen. This is why we need to hear about him. You know, I keep saying this because I think it helps people. Because as you grow in your witness for Christ, and you're really hungry for God and you want to win people to Christ like you do, then here's what happens. We want to be effective in doing that. We, this is why we need to know where this is because we have to understand. We have to depend upon the Holy Spirit. When we're talking to people, it's the work of the Holy Spirit to draw people to Jesus Christ. If He is lifted up, then the moment we start talking about Jesus, the Holy Ghost gets involved. See, you're not necessarily promised. Here's the difference. The world don't care you know, they don't get that mad when you talk about God, but you stop talking about Jesus and get hot and heavy on Jesus, oh boy, there's a, you can all the religious devils get mad then. Even though Jesus is God, 
The world has a lot of gods, and, they, they, and the religious world don't mind you saying something about God, but when you start talking about Jesus and Him being the only way, oh boy, you can talk about, you can, you can tell where people are at, boy. You can tell about what spirit they are of. And so the reason I'm, I'm saying this is because uh, we have to realize that the moment, according to the book of Acts, the moment we start talking about Jesus, the Holy Ghost gets involved. Ain't necessarily true about just saying the word God, but when you start talking about Jesus and talking to exalting Him, the Holy Ghost anoints for that. The Holy Ghost lands on that. And why? Because now the Father works to draw people to Him. Amen. And so here's the thing why I say it's so important that we talk about this and we, you know, that people need to hear what the Word says about Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of times people will say, I've heard people say to me, and I, this is what I say to them. They say, well, I don't, I don't believe that. And then they tell me why, and I say, well, you know what? If I were in your shoes, I wouldn't believe either. And that always gets their attention. Because they think that you're going to come back and, you know, uh, with something cute or something to defend, you know, the faith. Well, I'm defending the faith, but I'm defending it in a different way. And I, and I just say, well, if I was in your shoes, probably I wouldn't believe it either. And they say, well, what do you, and if they don't say, well, what do you mean? I will say, and here's what I mean by that. It is impossible to believe in God that you haven't heard about. And, with, and the only way you can have faith in God is to hear the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The only way you can have any faith about God is to hear the word. And because, the, and, and you, you, how can you have a faith in a God that you never heard about? Or never heard the truth about? Or never heard the word about? So that's why the devil loves to try to keep people out of churches that preach the Word of God. Because that's the only way faith comes. You can talk about God all day and all this and other things, and it be a hypothetical thing, the God of the celestial heights and all that, but you start talking Bible, Jesus, blood, dying for you, raising again from the dead. For, come on, that, this going to stir every devil in hell up. But it also produces faith in the heart of man. If it's done right, praise the Lord. So we can see here, what do we talk about? The supernatural power of, of God. The Holy Spirit is the supernatural power of God at work to draw men to Jesus Christ. Number two, the Holy Spirit is the supernatural power of God at work to save men. Woo, glory to God. See, you first got to be drawn to Christ. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, just drawing people, drawing people to the Father, drawing people that through the, the, the Holy Spirit to Jesus Christ so they can come to the Father. But it is the work of the Holy Spirit, the supernatural power of God to save man. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 is the verse that we'll look at. It says, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. So it's the work of the Holy Spirit in the heart of man upon the confession of Jesus Christ that causes as spirits to be born again or saved. Number three, the Holy Spirit is the supernatural power of God at work to bring revelation of Jesus Christ to mankind, especially or to his, well you could say to man or to his followers. It would be true on both. But here's what Jesus said concerning that in John chapter 14 and verse 26. John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said of unto you. Amen. So he's going to bring revelation of himself. It goes on in chapter 15, verse 26, to prove that point out. It says... 1526, but when the Comforter is come, Jesus said, whom I will send from the Father, even the Spirit of truth will proceed from me, he shall testify of who? He will testify of me, he said. The Holy Spirit's job is to testify of Jesus Christ. That means to give evidence to, that means to witness to, that means to make his person real to us, to reveal the true living God, Jesus Christ, to all of mankind. It is the Holy Spirit's job to bring revelation to that so we actually know Jesus in a real and a deep way. 
Number four, the Holy Spirit is the supernatural power of God at work to God and direct the affairs of man in God's will for their lives. It is impossible to fulfill the will of God for your life. The will of God for your life. I didn't say you couldn't make it to heaven. I just said it's impossible to fulfill the will of God in your life without the supernatural power and working of the Holy Spirit and your cooperation with Him. Romans 8 verse 14 says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 16 goes on and says, The Spirit itself actually is Himself, bears witness with our spirits that we are the what? The children of God. Amen. So, also we find in John chapter 16, I know I'm kind of going through this kind of quick. John 16, verse 13, but you're listening quick tonight. Praise the Lord. John 16, 13 says it like this. How be it when He, the Spirit of truth, how be it when He, He, not she, not it, He. That goes real Go over real good in the identity confused world that we live in. But the church isn't to be confused. That's why I'm just parking there for a moment. Let that sink in. How be it when he, the spirit, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just telling you that it's, it, it's where, where people live. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for you should not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Praise God. So notice here, I'm going to say it again, this fourth thing about the Holy Spirit and the supernatural power of God at work to God and direct the affairs of man in God's will for their lives. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us. Hallelujah. We'll get back to that. Maybe not tonight, but we'll get back there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's very important. Next, the Holy Spirit, I think this is number five. I believe that's correct. Number five, the Holy Spirit is the supernatural power of God to fill man with himself, enduing them with power from heaven and making them powerful witnesses for Jesus Christ. I'm going to say it again. I know I said a lot. The Holy Spirit is the supernatural power of God to fill man with himself. In other words, we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill man with himself. In doing them with power from heaven and making them witnesses for Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 24, verse 49, we find this beautiful verse. And behold, I will send the promise of my Father upon you, but tear you in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power. Everybody say power. And power from on high. You know, sometimes we can learn as much by what God didn't say as by what God did say. And we're going to learn a lot by what God said because we're going to look at Acts in just one moment. But before you turn to Acts chapter 1, we're going to read this again and tell you what it didn't say. But behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem till you be converted. It didn't say till you be converted. It didn't say till you be born again. Why didn't he say that? Because at this point, they are born again. In Acts 49, they're, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, in Luke 24, 49, they're, they are already all born again. Why? Because they have met the requirements. Jesus has died. He shed His blood. He went to hell for them. And He rose again in the resurrection. And He appeared to them and said, Believe on me. And they called Him Lord. Come on, they called Him Lord. And according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. For the heart man believes unto righteousness with his mouth confession is made resulting in salvation. So He's arose again from the dead. They've called Him Lord. And now His next uh, direction was tarry you in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. So they're about to get something they ain't got. Amen. They got Jesus, but they don't have this power from on high. Come on. We don't have to be confused about it. They got Jesus, but they don't have this power from on high. Where's the power from on high come from? The Holy Ghost. Listen, listen, church, always remember this. Jesus Christ is God's gift to the world. 
The Holy Spirit is God's gift to the church, to His people. You've got to be, you've got to be born again before you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And so, receiving Christ is different than being receiving the Holy Spirit. Yes, when you are born again, you are born of the Spirit. We're going to find it in just a moment. I'm going to cover that. That you're born of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes to live on the inside of you. But it's different between being born of the Spirit and filled with the Spirit. Jesus likened it to oh, the salvation as a well. you got a well at your house. Most of us have a well at our house. Who's a well for? You and your family. The, your neighbor don't benefit from that. But that's John chapter 4. Where he talks about the, the Holy Spirit will be in you like a well. Springing up unto salvation and eternal life. Then he talked about the Holy Ghost coming upon, being poured out in, in John chapter 7. And he says, but when he, the Spirit of God has come, he's going to be like a river, a river, a river in you. A river in you. You know what a river does? Not just bless you, but everybody around the river. The well is for you. That's the Spirit of God within. The river is the baptism of the Holy Spirit coming upon. It's for power and service that blesses man through you, blesses everybody you come in contact with if you learn to cooperate with the power of God. Hallelujah. The point I'm making is there are two separate events. Being born again and being filled with the Holy Spirit are two separate events. I'll never forget I had a wonderful Baptist woman. Everybody say, thank God for the Baptist. And I mean that. Praise God. Thank God for the Baptist. Uh, had a wonderful Baptist lady that worked for me a number of years when I cut meat. And we had many wonderful uh, conversations. She's in heaven today. Uh, we had many wonderful conversations about Jesus. Many wonderful conversations about Jesus. Uh, loved her. She loved me. But she found, she went, well, it didn't take long to find out that I was spirit-filled. Well, she didn't agree with that. She, she just believed that, like she had been taught, that she'd been taught two things. When you got born again, you got all the Holy Ghost there is. Well, that's not what Jesus taught. Or the New Testament taught. It's not what Paul taught. And if we stick around, we'll find that out. Won't tonight, but we, I mean, you will by my words, but you'll hear it next week by Scripture and verse. And, and she also believed that the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Ghost, and especially tongues, Anything to do with tongues had, had uh, been done away with. I said, done away with? Hmm. Hmm. Imagine that, done away with. And, but then she qualified, she said, well, but my pastor said that, uh, that uh, well, I won't even go there. I said, I, I asked her a question. I said, it's done away with, huh? She said, well, it's, it, 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 was in the, it was in the Old Testament. And it's done away with today. I said, can I ask you a question? I know you know your Bible. And she did. She knew her Bible. I said, where's the book of Acts at? Old Testament, New Testament. She said, New Testament. I said, I rest my case. End of discussion. Ain't no need to argue about it. You got your way. You know, if you, you know, if you want more of God, you can have more of God. She knew I loved her, and I, I, I tried to help her, and amen. Praise God. So, thank God. We just keep living it before people and, 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 and not being confused herself. See, if I didn't know the Bible, then she could have easily talked me into that. And I could have come to this church, which little storefront back, 30, 36 years ago, and been all confused about it. Well, I would have said, oh, them people are holy rollers. Them people are crazy. They're, they're, the, they're the snake handlers, and they're, they're, the, they're the chandelier hangers, and they're the they're runners, jumpers, and rollers. Praise the Lord. Now, well, we do some of that. Praise the Lord. We do run. Praise the Lord. I ain't seen nobody hang from the chandeliers yet in any church I've ever been in. Amen. Praise God. Anyway, the point, that I'm, the point that I'm getting at is if you don't know the Bible, you'll fall for anything. This is why it's so important we know this. This is why we have Bible study. 
and you take, you pay attention, you take notes, and don't go in one ear and come out the other. You don't just assume this is just for you. You learn this for you, but you learn this because you want to help people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is a multiplying effect when we, when, when, we, when we minister this way. Praise the Lord. So notice it says power. You shall, you shall receive power. I'm sorry. I send the promise of my Father upon you. I'm going to tell you, city of Jerusalem, to be endued with this power from on high. So, so we aren't confused. Let's look at Acts chapter 1 of what Jesus said about the promise from the Father and this power to be endued with from on high. Acts chapter 1, verse 4, And being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which you heard, which He said, You've heard of Me. So He's about to tell you what the promise of the Father is. Verse 5 says, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Baptized with the Holy Ghost. Baptized with the Holy Ghost. Remember, John told him, you, there's one coming after me. I'm going to baptize you in water, John said, but there's one coming after me whose shoe I'm not worthy to untie. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now, Jesus said the same thing right here. Not many days hence. When, when, when did they actually, not many days hence, what he's talking about? The day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Day of Pentecost, what happened? The Holy Ghost fell. What happened? They spoke in tongues and as the Spirit gave them utterance. What happened? God made them powerful witnesses. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 goes on and explains, But you shall receive power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, Jesus said, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, don't, don't get it. Sit on your can and, and, and stay with it. In other words, it's to affect you and go out through you to the rest of the world. Hallelujah. Notice, he, he says, we shall receive power when? After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, anybody honest can already know they're already born again here. They're already saved. Jesus is talking about two different experiences. There's a difference between being born of the Spirit and filled with the Holy Spirit. He wants us both. But once we're saved, the very next thing really should be a package deal. Get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. You ain't got to wait. The only prerequisite of being filled with the Holy Ghost, listen to me, the only prerequisite of being filled with the Holy Ghost is being born again, being saved, and wanting to be filled. Wanting to be filled. Wanting to be filled. Hallelujah. Number six, the, the Holy Spirit is the supernatural power of God which confirms the Word of God preached with signs, wonders, and miracles. Have you ever wondered how miracles happen? Well, it happens. Because the Spirit of God is working. I can't heal nobody. God can flow through me to heal somebody. You can't heal nobody in of yourself. But the Holy Ghost, God will use people and flow through them. And our faith gives action to that power. Glory. We saw that Sunday morning when my brother here, my brother, my brother, uh, Pastor Debbie, you know, I was preaching on, you know, we prayed for him. My, my brother, he asked me, he says, would you pray for, I've seen it in a vision, you, you and Pastor Debbie pray for me and my foot's going to be healed. Well, after we pray for him, he goes back to his seat and Pastor Debbie says, she, he's sitting there, I'm, I'm preaching on and all of a sudden you hear all this, all this kind of stuff. And said everybody close by was looking around like, what, you know, what's going on? And then Shuri, his wife, holds up the boot and says, here's the boot. Here's the boot. And he gets up in his sock feet and walk up. His leg was, had been all messed. He's walking and praising God. Well, about that time, everybody was praising God. And we should be praising God. Amen. But see, his... his his faith gave action to the power of God. He texted me the next day. We played phone tag a little bit. He said, Pastor Chris, I'm wearing a normal shoe. Praise God. And there he is. Praise God. There he is holding his foot up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now that's God. And that faith gives action to the power of God, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
The Holy Ghost is the supernatural power of God which confirms the Word of God preached with signs, wonders, and miracles. At um, Mark chapter 16, we got this one and one other one to do, and we'll finish. Uh, Mark 16, verse 15 through 20. Let's look at that. And he said unto them, to us, go into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel, the gospel, the gospel. Well, don't get confused about the gospel. Gospel means good news. But let me tell you something. In Acts chapter 14, the word gospel was related to the healing of the man there in Acts chapter 14. It says there... Paul preached the gospel and the man heard him preach the gospel and it says that Paul perceiving, Acts chapter 4 verse 7 through verse 10, Paul perceiving that man had faith to be healed said to the man, stand up on your feet and be healed. And he did. Notice how that man had faith to be healed by hearing the gospel. So it must mean that the gospel includes healing, not just salvation. And we know by the wonderful uh, Baptist minister, Dr. Schofield, he said in his, in, in his Bible, there in the footnotes, that the word salvation, the, word, the Greek word so-so, sozo, S-O-Z-O, or soteria, whatever form that you want to read it from, means not just the salvation of a man's soul, but it means healing, deliverance, wholeness, safety, and preservation. Matter of fact, it's translated all through the Gospels as the word healed and whole. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Daughter or son, your faith has made you whole. Come on. It's translated that way in our own New Testament. So the Gospel has to do as much with healing as it do, does with salvation. Can I get amen? Go into the world and preach, the, go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. He that believes and baptized shall be saved. He that disbelieves shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. These signs shall follow them that believe. It, the believing ones have these signs following. Why? Because you're going to find out the Holy Ghost is working with us. Uh, in my name they'll cast out devils, they'll speak with new tongues, they'll take up serpents, they'll drink into daily thing, and I hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Verse 20 goes on and said, goes on and said, verse 20, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. How did the Lord work with them through the power of the Holy Ghost? Confirming the word, confirming the word with signs following. See, he confirms the word. He confirms the word. The Holy Spirit confirms the word. He always confirms Jesus. Who is the word? Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm helping us tonight. Praise the Lord. Then last but not least, number seven, the Holy Spirit is the supernatural power of God at work to make the body of Christ, Jesus' mouth, His hands and feet, and God known, shown, and demonstrated in the earth. I'll say that again. The Holy Ghost is the supernatural power of God at work to make the body of Christ, Jesus' mouth, His hands, His feet, and God known, shown, and demonstrated in the earth. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11 through 13 says it like this. And, but all these worketh the same, set one in the same self spirit, dividing servile to every man as he wills. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, also is Christ. For one, by one Spirit we were all baptized or placed into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bound or free, we would all been made to drink of that one Spirit. Come on, Brother Ryan, you can help me tonight in closing. Now, if you go on and read that, the rest of that chapter, remember he says this about the body. We're all one, different members. All one, different members. All one, different members. You call this my finger, but it's part of my body. It may be a finger, but it's part of my body. In other words, he made the comparison that I can't say to the foot, I have no need of thee. You know, I'm just, come on. All parts are important parts of the body. And it's the body gives expression, all these individual gifts together give expression, give expression that we, are, we become the mouthpiece, we become the hands, the feet, hallelujah, come on, the body of Christ does, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we demonstrate that we make God, we make God known, shown, and demonstrated in the earth, we are His body. 
All, these are all powerful aspects of the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit to affect our lives. I'm going to say that again. All these seven things are powerful aspects of the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit to affect our lives. This is why the supernatural and the Holy Spirit is so important. You want to talk about a powerless church, you talk about a church that never talks about the Holy Spirit. But you got to talk about the Holy Spirit. He's the one who lives in us, works in and through us. Remember, Jesus said, said it like this, apart from me, you can do nothing. So in that terms, he's saying apart from the Holy Spirit, we can really do nothing. This had ported the work of the Holy Spirit is in the church and us knowing how to cooperate with Him. You only know the light. We need this. Notice He didn't say you receive weirdness. He said you'll receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Don't let a, don't, don't, don't let a, a, a few flakes and nuts ruin, it, ruin your breakfast. Come on. We, you're gonna, I, you know, Brother Hagin said it really well. I mean, we don't want wildfire, but he said, I'd rather have wildfire, than, a little wildfire. He said, I'd rather have a little wildfire than no fire at all. Now, ultimately, we want the balance and we want God to show up and, you know, the fire of God. Because, but what's, what happens is people that don't understand will, will cause even believers to shy away from what's genuine and real. And because we haven't been taught the way we should have what's genuine and real, those seven points I share right there, we should know. We should know. So that when people say, well, you know, the Holy Ghost, you know, this is not the Holy Ghost stuff. Is that, that tongue stuff is weird. No, it's not weird. It's, it's power. It's the, you see, let me ask you something. So you got a pair of tennis shoes. I'm not going to ask you to take them off, okay? Embarrass you, Tammy. Doesn't Tammy do a good job on staff? Praise the Lord. She does a good job on staff. Praise the Lord. we got a really great staff. All of them are. Um, but what we have to understand is tongues comes with the Holy Ghost. When we get filled with the Holy Spirit, the initial sign is tongues. It's a prayer language in its simplest form to help us to pray the perfect will of God. It's a means as well as spiritual edification. And how many know we need to be spiritually edified? In other words, we can understand this. The Greek actually says it charges you as a battery. So we all have batteries in our cars. And that battery needs to stay charged in order for it to have cranking power to start the engine. Is that right? Okay, well, praying in the Holy Ghost is a means of spiritual edification, building yourself up on your most holy faith. Matter of fact, the Amplified at Jude, it's only one chapter, verse 20, it says, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, rising higher and higher like an edifice. So you actually, you can go as high as you want in God, but it's in connection with the Holy Ghost. And so it's really important that we, that we understand that the, the, the Holy Spirit is the giver of every perfect gift. And, and with the Holy Spirit, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, the initial evidence is, to, is you speak in other tongues. Sometimes people say, well, I want the Holy Ghost. You see, it, receiving, being baptized with the Holy Spirit is not just about tongues. That's just the initial evidence. It's about receiving the gifts that God gives. And the initial gift that God gives to let everyone know that you are filled with the Holy Ghost is that prayer language, that, that gift of speaking in other tongues. In Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 4, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter uh, 10, and Acts chapter 19, all five instances when believers got filled with the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, they spoke with other tongues. 
I can prove it to you. On those all five instances, they got filled with the Holy Ghost. When they got filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke with other tongues. Now, I said this about Tammy's shoe. You know what? You wouldn't go to the store. You wouldn't go to the Foot Lock. A lot of you heard me say this before. You wouldn't go to Foot Lock or your favorite shoe store, pay $250 for a pair of shoes, and get this, those tennis shoes up to the counter. You got tongues. You got tongues. You just got shoes. Praise the Lord. Amen. You wouldn't get them up to the counter and say, I want these without the tongues. The tongue's got a purpose. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, the tongues have a purpose. It's to help us. It causes us to be strong in Him. You know, it makes God more real to us. Don't tell me it don't make God more real to us. See, a reason why He, another reason, this part about God being magnified and made real to us in our lives, we need that more than ever. Because all the stuff that bombards us, man, I sit in my chair in the morning time and, and yield to the Holy Ghost and pray in other tongues, man, there's awareness on the inside. You, couldn't, you can't talk me out of that God ain't real. Come on. And that God ain't done a work and He's not real. Come on, I, I, I know better than that. Come on, you got me too late. And the awareness of God on the inside, I mean, it's a, what a great blessing that is to be charged and be built up and God magnified and made bigger and realer in your life that way. Let's all stand to our feet tonight. Father, we thank you and praise you for the Holy, the supernatural and the Holy Ghost. We praise you in each of our lives.